Did you know that your chances of encountering a Florida black bear are greater today than any time in the past 100 years? Yes, it's true. So it's never been more important for you to know how to share Florida's changing landscape with this amazing animal. Despite historic population declines from human development and unregulated hunting, Florida's black bear population is rebounding across much of the state. We have between 2,500 and 3,000 bears living in Florida in eight different populations. The largest population is over 1,000 bears living in and around Ocala National Forest. These large tracts of heavily forested lands offer a diversity of nut and fruit producing trees and plants. And despite its close proximity to Orlando, the area from the Wakaiba River Basin north to Putnam County provides ideal habitat for bears. Another notable population is located in the Apalachicola National Forest and Tate's Hell State Forest areas located between Tallahassee and Panama City. New DNA sampling techniques using bear hair make it much easier for biologists to generate estimates for black bear numbers in different regions. We set up barbed wire corrals, and in the middle of those corrals we have bait, so the bears have a reason to come in and out of those corrals. When they enter, they leave some hair behind, and when they exit, they leave some hair behind. And all we have to do is take that hair and analyze it, and just like a person's fingerprint, it's uniquely individual for that bear. And so we can tell how many bears are in the area, and the bears none the wiser. Other bear populations are located in the Big Cypress National Preserve Area in southern Florida the Eglin Air Force Base area east of Pensacola, the Osceola National Forest area west of Jacksonville, and the St. John's River area near St. Augustine. The two smallest bear populations are in the Chesawitzka National Wildlife Refuge area and a portion of Glades and Highlands counties. Both of those areas are highly fragmented and lack the large contiguous tracts of land that bears typically need to avoid the hazards of living in a human-dominated landscape. Uh, the biggest threat to black bears in Florida is, is one of a loss of habitat, just as it is for large mammals wherever they occur. And in Florida, with rapidly growing state with 18 million people, and all those people need, you know, have needs for places to live, work, shop, drive, and we estimate there's only 17 percent of the former range left in the state. And as Florida becomes more and more human dominated the patches of natural habitat become smaller and smaller and the, the risk to bears to access them becomes greater as having to traverse a, a human dominated landscape, roads and come in contact with people increases their risk. Florida black bears are adaptable to a variety of forested habitats. Bears are opportunistic animals. They like a lot of different types of habitat, but mostly it's forest. Uh, primary bear habitat includes bottleman and upland hardwoods, mixed forest, scrub, flatwoods, and swamps. The ideal bear habitat has a mixture of these types that allow bears to access them with different parts of the year and different parts of the seasons. Bears can actually be found almost anywhere in Florida because they wander far and wide in search of food and mates and that includes downtown Orlando in some cases. Florida black bears need large areas to survive. Depending on the quality of available habitat, average home ranges for adult male bears are between 50 and 120 square miles, while home ranges for adult females are usually between 11 and 25 square miles. Contrary to popular belief, Florida black bears eat very little meat. In fact, 80% of a bear's diet in Florida tends to be vegetation. That includes fruits, nuts, berries, and fiber from plants. Um, the other 15% would be from insects, and that's bees, ants, wasps, and beetles. And then really only 5% would be small animals like opossum and armadillo, and also eggs from birds, turtles, or alligators. A bear's diet varies seasonally. However, all year round, salt palmetto is an extremely important element of the bear's diet. They eat the berries, but also the fiber from the plant itself. 
One big difference between Florida black bears and their northern cousins is their winter denning behavior. Even though Florida lies within southerly latitudes, black bears here still den in winter, but for shorter periods of time. Pregnant females must den in winter to give birth to their cubs. They enter dens in December and emerge with an average of two newborn cubs in April. Other females and males only den for brief periods through the winter. Their dens are typically ground nests in dense thickets and under blowdowns or fallen branches. So seasonally, there's less chance of seeing a bear in the winter. Bears' activity schedule is very similar to some other animals. They're called crepuscular, which means they're active most at dawn and dusk. And in the middle of the day and in the middle of the night, they're in relatively inactive. Um, however, this changes seasonally. During the fall, bears can be actively searching for food almost 18 hours a day. Also, we found in Florida that bears that live in the urban wildland interface actually become more nocturnal. And that coincides with a drop in human activity in the areas that they live. Though their population is rebounding, the Florida black bear remains a protected species, both in the eyes of responsible citizens and the law. Everyone might not know this, but a black bear is considered a threatened species in the state of Florida. Uh, therefore, it's illegal to kill them. If someone were to kill a black bear, it is a third degree felony. Uh, that carries a penalty of up to five years in prison and or a $5,000 fine. In addition, if the person is adjudicated guilty, this would be on their criminal record forever. Florida bears are relatively free of life-threatening diseases or parasites. And aside from humans and other bears, they have few natural predators. So despite how big and powerful bears seem, they do still die. And the vast majority of the recorded deaths of bears in Florida is caused by vehicle collisions. Florida black bears need to eat a year's worth of food in eight months in preparation for winter dormancy. And it's the bear's unquenchable appetite that causes problems when living near easy to get human sources of food. Some obvious human food sources include pet and livestock feed. But one not so obvious food is accessible garbage, which bears tear into with relish. The problem is that when people are out in areas where wildlife exists as well, there's a food issue. And when people don't secure the food properly or they offer food to wildlife, it creates conflicts with that wildlife and in this case also with bears. It's much easier for bears to get their calories from rich human food sources, garbage, pet foods and bird feeders, than from natural foods in the wild. That's why the feeding of bears, whether intended or not, is the number one source of human bear conflict. A lot of people wouldn't think about something as simple as placing their garbage out for pickup uh, could possibly be feeding black bears. Now this would be an unintentional act, obviously at first, but if it was determined that this action was becoming an attractant to the bears, therefore they were actually eating the garbage, uh, then that would become an intentional act. So we encourage people to think about these things as well, not just someone who would intentionally be placing out food, say in a dog dish in their backyard to attract or feed a black bear. Uh, both of these examples would be considered illegal. Feeding a black bear is not only illegal, but it is the wrong thing to do. When you see a raccoon in your yard getting into your garbage or bird feed or pet food, you're looking at a gateway species to bear problems. If uh, you have that attractant in your yard and you have bears in the area, you're likely going to have bear problems as well. And the real problem for the bears is that associating food with human beings causes them to lose their fear, they become habituated, and the ultimate tragedy here is these bears end up being killed. But the good news is this tragedy is very preventable. The solution to not having problems with bears is securing the food sources, and it, it really is that simple. Be it dumpsters or household garbage or pet food or bird seed, it, if it's secured where bears can't get to it, then we don't have a problem. 
As more citizens and agencies become familiar working with FWC on preventing bear conflicts, the more successes they record for communities and the bears. We were having some problems with the bears visiting the park here in Salt Springs. Uh, I called FWC basically because I was concerned for people's safety, uh, not only the residents but the campers that visit the park. Uh, after calling them, they gave us many options. One that seemed to work for us was the bear-proof dumpsters. Once we learned how to operate those properly and make sure that they were locked when they needed to be, it, it has helped quite tremendously. But we feel like this is a great start and it'll be a win-win situation, not only for us and FWC, but for the bears also. Besides using bear-proof garbage containers, FWC also helps educate people about other proven bear deterrents. We learned a long time ago that electric fences are really effective at securing beehives. Now we've expanded that into securing garbage and livestock and any other attractants you think you have in your yard. Here in Florida, it's really turned into a silver bullet for deterring bears. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission manages black bears for their long-term survival and the benefit of people. Protecting enough of the right kind of habitat is the most important thing we can do for bears in Florida. The benefit we, we realize from conserving bears and conserving bear habitat is that bears are known as an umbrella species and we preserve the habitat for bears, we're also preserving the habitat for a myriad number of other species, deer, turkey, songbirds, reptiles, as well as for people to recreate in. So it benefits a large number of species. Recent predictions indicate our state's human population may double in the next 50 years. If that happens, about seven million acres of land, or about the size of the state of Vermont, could be converted from natural areas to urban uses. As more wild lands are lost to suburban and urban uses, and bears adapt to areas frequented by humans, bear managers must find ways to balance fear with knowledge and acceptance of bears in the landscape. Our wildlife resources are priceless, and in order to keep them for our enjoyment, our children's enjoyment, our grandchildren's enjoyment, we have to learn to tolerate them existing in the same space with us. Here in Florida, one of our biggest challenges with an expanding human population and increasing bear population is we need the partnership with local communities and homeowners associations to not only educate the public, but influence policies so we can responsibly share the land with bears. One of the keys to meeting these challenges is helping citizens like you Understand the habits of black bears and what you can do to minimize conflicts with these remarkable animals. The solution is so simple. Just don't intentionally feed bears or unintentionally feed bears by leaving garbage, pet food, or bird seed outside where bears can get to it. But don't stop there. This is an important message. Share it with your family, your friends, your neighbors, your community, so that we can all learn to coexist with bears. To learn more about living and recreating in Florida bear country, go to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission's Black Bear website at myfwc.com forward slash bear.